Quantum choices do not drift away. They are executed instantly, die instantly. In quantum mechanics, the true strangeness lives in the glowing off-diagonal terms of the density matrix, the math behind superpositions. But when even a hint of information leaks into the environment, the numbers that make interference possible collapse to zero at speeds so staggering that you never see quantum weirdness in daily life. The question that persists is this, why does coherence vanish so fast? And what law decides how long quantum options survive before reality erases them? In 1801, inside a quiet London lecture hall, Thomas Young set up a simple experiment, a beam of light, a barrier with two narrow slits, and a screen. When the light passed through both slits, it painted the screen with a series of bright and dark stripes. The result was an interference pattern, a visible signature that waves were combining on the screen. Each bright fringe was more than a pretty line. Each fringe was a fingerprint of superposition, evidence that light and by extension matter could exist in multiple possibilities at once. The stripes proved that the smallest scales do not obey ordinary rules. But the pattern is fragile. Even the faintest brush with the outside world can erase it. Let a single dust particle drift into the beam, or let a stray photon scatter off the path, and the stripes dissolve into a uniform blur. The interference vanishes. The superposition is gone. The universe does not need a human eye to watch. Any trace of which path information leaking to the environment is enough. The moment the environment could, in principle, know which slit the photon traveled through, the pattern dies. Information escaping is what kills the effect. The pattern's beauty is replaced by dull certainty. What remains looks exactly like light that chose a single slit all along, a classical shadow with no quantum mystery. Young's double slit experiment is the stage where quantum possibility and classical certainty play out. The stripes do not fade slowly. They vanish as soon as the environment learns too much. The difference between a world of possibilities and a world of facts comes down to whether the universe keeps a secret or lets that secret slip. That is the mystery that decoherence will unravel. A quantum system is described not just by a list of outcomes, but by a grid of numbers called the density matrix. For a pure state, RO equals the outer product of psi with itself. The diagonal entries hold the probabilities for each outcome. The off-diagonal entries are the secret keepers. They carry the phase relationships, the coherence that lets quantum possibilities interfere. These are the numbers that make superposition real. Quantum systems do not exist in a vacuum. Every atom, every photon, every bit of air is a potential eavesdropper. When a system interacts with its environment, physicists stop trying to track the entire universe and perform a single mathematical step instead. They trace out the environment to find what remains for the system alone. Write the combined state as psi, then compute RO of the system equals the trace over the environment of psi outer product psi. This operation was introduced by John von Neumann in Berlin in 1932. It is the mathematical act of forgetting what the environment knows. Here, the numbers turn brutal. As the environment interacts with the system, each off-diagonal entry picks up a random phase. Imagine a thousand clocks, each ticking at a different rate, their hands spinning out of sync. When you add up all those phases, the result averages to zero. The coherence vanishes. The interference terms, the off-diagonals, fade away. What remains is a matrix with only diagonal entries, classical probabilities, and no quantum strangeness. The speed of this collapse is not gentle. For most systems at room temperature, the off-diagonals decay exponentially, shrinking as e to the minus t over tau, where tau is the coherence time. For a grain of dust in air, tau can be less than a trillionth of a second. Decoherence is not a slow fade. It is a mathematical execution. The density matrix, once alive with possibility, becomes a ledger of facts. The difference is written in the off-diagonals, numbers that die instantly, erased by the world's relentless noise. In 1970, inside a seminar room in Heidelberg, H. Dieter Zay published a paper that changed the course of quantum physics. Zay's insight was simple but radical. The environment itself, 
not consciousness or a measuring device, is what erases quantum coherence. By treating the environment as part of the quantum story, Zay showed how the off-diagonal elements in the density matrix vanish without any hand-waving about observers. His work faced skepticism. Many physicists were still searching for meaning in the act of measurement, but Zay's math told a different story. It was the world's own noise, the endless jostling of atoms, photons, and fields that carried away quantum secrets and left only classical facts behind. A decade later, Wojciech Zurek picked up the thread at Los Alamos. Zurek's work in 1981 and 1982 gave decoherence a practical edge. He introduced the idea of pointer states, stable patterns the environment cannot easily disturb. Zurek calculated how the environment selects these robust states, forcing quantum systems to behave classically. He called this process environment induced superselection, also known as Ein selection. Zurek's equations showed just how fast decoherence acts. For a dust grain floating in air, quantum coherence can be lost in less than a billionth of a billionth of a second. The math was no longer just an idea. It was a stopwatch, counting down the instant when quantum choices die. The struggle against decoherence moved from theory to experiment. In Paris, Serge Haroche and his team built delicate cavities to trap single photons, watching them interact with stray atoms and tracking the decay of coherence in real time. Across the Atlantic, David Weinland's group at NIST in Boulder trapped ions and measured how quickly their quantum states collapsed under environmental noise. In 2012, Haroche and Weinland shared the Nobel Prize for these achievements. Their experiments did not just confirm the math. They fought against decoherence, measuring its effects, and stretching coherence times as far as possible. Every result pointed to the same conclusion. Decoherence is relentless, and the classical world is the product of its speed. The community had its proof. Decoherence was not a philosophical idea, but a measurable, calculable, and now experimentally verified fact. Decoherence acts with ruthless speed, but its story is not the end of quantum possibility. In a warm, noisy world, quantum coherence cannot survive. Physicist Max Tegmark calculated a coherence time called TAU of about 10 to the minus 13 seconds. That is a decimal point, followed by 12 zeros, and then a one. Any quantum superposition in neural tissue is destroyed before a single neuron can fire. The off-diagonal terms in the brain's density matrix do not fade gently. They are wiped out almost instantly by the relentless chatter of ions, water molecules, and thermal vibrations. This number is not just a curiosity. It sets a hard limit on what quantum mechanics can do for consciousness, memory, or free will in warm biological systems. The math says whatever else the mind may be, it is not a quantum computer running on long-lived superpositions. Decoherence suppresses interference, not outcomes. It explains why we do not see quantum choices in action, but it does not select which outcome appears. The density matrix loses its off-diagonals, but the question of why one result happens and not another remains untouched. Roger Penrose has argued that structures inside neurons called microtubules might protect quantum coherence long enough to matter for thought. Tegmark's calculations suggest otherwise. The environment's noise is simply too strong. Even if some quantum effects flicker for a moment, they die long before they could influence a conscious act. The disagreement between Penrose and Tegmark is a frontier, not a settled verdict. Decoherence draws the boundary, and in warm, macroscopic worlds, quantum weirdness is snuffed out in a flash. But the math itself stays humble. It tells us where the quantum world ends, not why the classical world begins. Right now, every warm, noisy system, your brain included, watches quantum choices vanish in trillionths of a second. Decoherence is not theory. It is a measured limit on what can ever appear quantum in daily life. The math draws the boundary. What is left and what it means for choice is still open.